Welcome back to Case Files, where we dive into our players. In today's episode, we're going to take a closer look at Mac Hollins, the wide receiver. We're going to figure out, will he be our future number two guy going forward? And we're going to see why Arthur Smith decided to grab this guy where there were plenty of other wide receivers in the free agency market. And if you like this type of content, please hit that subscribe button. It helps out the channel so much. So let's carry on with the video. In week two, against the Arizona Cardinals, Matt Hollins had an average game. He was targeted eight times, he caught five balls, and total yards was 66. So the reason why I put an average game, because in the first quarter, he was dominating. He was catching everything that he was targeted at. But then for some reason, in the third and fourth quarter, he was a no-show. So let's check out the film and why. On this play, it's kind of hard to tell, but Hollins is going to use a curl route where he goes upwards and then he's going to cut, stop, and watch where Derek Carr is moving, and then he grabs the ball for 20 yards. And the reason why it was so easy for Hollins to get that incredible curl route with 20 plus yards was because he was playing against the Arizona soft zone coverage three. So on this play, we're going to see how Hollins handled himself when it comes to the run game. I like it already where he goes after the safety, then making sure that he gets locked and loaded, and that leaves one-on-one -on -one with the running back, and he wins his individual matchup to gain this amazing yardage. This is the potential speed that Mac Hollins can deliver on every gameplay right here where he does a nice post route where he beats his man Marco Wilson for almost a touchdown. So usually when a post route happens, they go upward and then they're going to cut to the right side. But instead, he decided to cut to the left to confuse Marco Wilson and he won his individual matchup. So that's fantastic for this big guy. So on this play, Hollins is going to use a dig in route, but the problem is he doesn't use his extreme speed to get separation, and then that makes Derek Carr throw it away because I'm presumably thinking that he can't catch the ball or some reason, but this is kind of like both players at fault. This is a great blocking play call by the Raiders, so they're going to use Mac Hollins to make sure that he wins his individual matchup, so that means that Levante Adams get a clear coverage to go into the red zone for this touchdown. On this play call, Hollins is going to use another curl route going against the Arizona playing a soft zone coverage for some reason. That leaves all this free wide open space where Hollins just quickly, look how he uses his feet, his motions, and uses his arms to try to get more yardage. So on this play, we like to call this in the business a go route where you just go straight and hopefully you catch this ball for a touchdown. But unfortunately for Hollins, it does not come into fruition. Well, the good thing is that he, that uh, Marco Wilson was flagged for pass interference because it was on a catchable ball. But I thought Derek Carr could have thrown a little bit better, uh, more a little bit more accurate. But then again, Holland out did speed his man, so I blame this on Derek Carr. In week three against the Tennessee Titans, Hollins had an excellent game. He was targeted 11 times, caught eight balls, received over 158 yards, and one touchdown. So let's see why he had a great game. This is a really cool play that Holland does when he uses his out route mechanic, where he goes straight up, and then he's going to turn to the left side to get this wide open space. And I love that he sells it. He's timing it, and the footwork capacity he's using on this play is excellent. Look at this incredible cut he's doing right now where he tricks the corner to thinking that he's going somewhere else. That's a good IQ test that Hollins uses on the corner because the corner knows the routes as well, but he doesn't know which one he's going against. This is an incredible play. Now, if you guys don't understand why, not just because he... He got the 4-1 down, but watch this. He's sailing this where the defenders think that he's going to be blocking, but no, he quickly does that for in the beginning of that one split second, and then he goes to the right side to get this incredible first down. So on this play, we have another GOAT route, but this time Hollins does connect with the ball because Derek Carr gives him a perfect aim, perfect position, and perfect timing as well, and also Hollins uses nice foot mechanics to get extra yards. We're going to see another out route that Hollins used, but watch is how he uses his body to trick the defender thinking he's going somewhere else to give him a little bit more separation to get extra yardage. On this play, is all about timing, and Hollins was, I believe, to be in a corner route position where they, they he didn't get enough separation where he could make a big play, and also the corner was almost as tall as him, so kind of canceled each other out. 
So on this play, Hollins is going to use another go route, but for this one, it's all about skill and timing and the mechanics of him getting a, enough separation where he can grab this and the angle of how he contorts his body is so incredible on this play. Look at this. He just goes straight for 20 yards plus, doesn't realize it until at the very end he sees it is coming towards him. On this play, Hollins is going to use another curl route, but this time at the red zone, he catches the ball. So what's the difference? For me, I think it's easy for Derek Carr to see where Hollins is going to be matched up. And also, Hollins has a lot easier time to get separation, where clearly the defender is not tall, but he's not small either, but is enough to grab Hollins the ball because he can use that extra step. In Week 10 against the Indianapolis Colts, Mac Hollins had a bad game game. And why do I emphasize the extra game? Because it's not the first time he was a no-show against the Los Angeles Chargers. Both against the Kansas City Chiefs games, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Los Angeles Rams, the Pittsburgh Steelers, were he was a no-show. But I want to cultivate all those together in one bad game so we don't have to go through all that palava. So he was targeted six times, caught two receptions for 18 receiving yards and zero touchdowns. Let's check out the film why. I personally don't like this play call because I don't know what Hollins was trying to do on this goal route and then Derek Carr just lobbed it up to see what happened. I think both parties were at fault. So on this play, Hollins doesn't do a great job of doing his dig in route because he gets jammed way too early before Derek Carr can give him the proper ball because you see right here where he's, he's up in the top and he's trying to go to the right side, but the defender is draped all over him. A lot of times we're gonna have plays like these where it doesn't matter who wins their individual matchups or not, it's all about timing and making sure you're accurate as possible to connect, but unfortunately it just doesn't go their way. On this play, this is the first time that Hollins catches the ball and it's a weird curl route, but even though he catches it, he looks where he needs to go and goes plant his feet forward. So this is just an easy, Play action pass, get five yards, but even still, it might not be sexy. It's still nice to know how he can use his foot mechanics. In week 11, against the Denver Broncos, Hollins had an excellent game where he was targeted nine times, caught six balls, and gathered 52 receiving yards. And the reason why he had an excellent game because his blocking was outstanding and it shows you why Arthur Smith really wanted to get this guy in the free agency market. Let's check out the film. This is a pretty cool play on Hollins when he's using another curl route, but if you notice that he finds separation, creates more room to get him an open space to go and grab this first down. On this drive, we can see Hollins gonna use a cross locked route where he's going forward and then he's gonna cut to go to the left side to try to get more yardage. And this is a really cool concept right here where you see this where he gives himself enough room so he doesn't get bumped and gives himself also enough time to adjust where the ball needs to go to try to pick up more yardage. So Hollins was in a wide cross play and for some reason I don't understand what happened or what messed up because I don't have another angle to go by but even still he was almost never covered and that's usually never a good thing. So we have another blocking play that I really like how Hollins takes control against Kareem Jackson where he doesn't manhandle him where he throws a penalty but he does enough to push him way back to making sure that the running back gets enough yardage. We have another run block play to show you where he's going against Jacob Martin, the outside linebacker, 54, and then he's going against Kareem Jackson, number 22, the safety again, to make sure that Josh Jacob has enough room to make a major impact in the run game. We have another amazing play in the run game where he's going against Damari Mathis, the cornerback, the rookie cornerback out of Pittsburgh. And look how he just pushes him through just enough to making sure that he does not hit the running back. On this drive, Hollins is going to use a cross route, but unfortunately Derek Carr gets pressure and he doesn't have enough time for him to connect to Hollins. So I don't know if this supposed to be a proper comeback route because Hollins does not stop on a dime, especially on a 45 degree angle towards the sideline where we clearly see that. My theory is that Derek Carr was not patient enough to allow Hollins to get in his proper form. So on paper, this is going to be a simple dig route, but he gives himself so much space and awareness where he needs to go to make sure he doesn't get touched. 
We have another run play where he's going against Justin Simmons, number 31, the free safety, who's a baller, and he does whatever he needs to do to make sure that he didn't get near the running back. This is a good example that not every play has to be a banger. As long as your quarterback has some trust in you, you should be fine. For our final game of today's episode, we're going to watch Week 18 against the New England Patriots. And Hollins had an excellent game again where he was targeted eight times, caught four receptions, and had 40 yards and one touchdown to boot. And there's a lot of other things he did well in this game, so let's take a closer look. So it is kind of hard to tell, but if you look at the very top, Hollins is going against Jonathan Jones, the cornerback number 31, and he still does a great job to making sure that Jonathan Jones doesn't get near the running back. We have another amazing run blocking play by the wide receiver Hollins where he's going after Devin McCorhey, the safety number 32 where he's pushing him back to making sure that he doesn't even get close and touching Josh Jacob where he's pushing way back. That's amazing to see. So the quarterback is at fault here because Hollins does an excellent job on an out route and before you see any anything else you're thinking of, well it's clearly Hollins didn't catch the ball, no. Hollins did an incredible job getting down the field, then create enough space where he's wide open right here on this field, and then Derek Carr just hesitates and not throw him the ball. So we as fans are going to see a lot of simple plays like these where he's going to do a simple route, but what's good thing about it, he checks his surroundings and making sure he finds extra yardage as possible. So on this touchdown drive, we're going to see the incredible hands that Mac Hollins has where Derek Carr for some reason goes really low and it looks pretty hard to catch. But good thing for Hollins with his 6'4 body frame, he catches it with his hand, gripping it, grips it, pulls it into his chest to making sure it's secure enough for this touchdown. This is very uncharacteristic when it comes to Hollins in the blocking scheme because he's going against Drill Peppers and he lets go way too quickly, way too early where he just catches up with the running back. So on this play call, Mac Hollins absolutely dominates against number 31, the cornerback Jonathan Jones on this play. This should have been a touchdown. This would have been a catch. But Derek Carr didn't give Mac Holland a little bit more time where he can maneuver and angle his body the correct way. So when he does throw the ball, he can catch it easier. And I think Derek Carr just didn't want to be patient enough. So yes, I'm blaming Derek Carr for this. This is a very gutsy play where this determines if you're going to win a game or not. And I love the comeback route that Hollins has made and where... This is a great job by Derek Carr where he throws it up perfectly where he can grab it with his big frame and look at that cut where he give himself enough room to get this without any problems. What do I always preach on this channel? Consistency. When you can do it over and over in your sleep without any problems or any hesitation, that will kill the defenders and that shows what kind of IQ talent that Holland has because this is the same play they used on the previous one. Perfect. So what is the final verdict for Mac Hollins? Honestly, I feel a lot better knowing what he can do now than previously because I got to watch a lot of Raider games these past couple days to see what he is capable. I love him in the running game. I thought he's excellent in coverage skills, understanding where to go, where your routes, understand how to attack the defenders, even though they know your routes, but you know how to least get them better one-on-one -on -one individual matches. He won more individual matches I have seen. He would have better stat-wise if Derek Carr would trust in him a lot more and not giving the ball way more attention to um, Adams, number 17. But clearly, he is a fantastic steal for the Falcons to grab, and so I'm very happy about that. Uh, my confidence levels were so very low when we got him, but thankfully, I got to see what he can do, and hopefully he can replicate that with the Falcons, and I think he can, because Arthur Smith will put him in the right positions to get him more yards, and this is a big upgrade for Desmond Redder to use for his brand new toy, and a lot of people were saying he could be the Muhammad Sanu for us, and yeah, I think he can be, so I'm very excited for this, so this is definitely, I think, on paper, an A-plus deal in my book. Of course, there's some things he needs to improve on, especially when it comes to those short 
routes where he gets jammed way too easily. I kind of noticed where he's always get tick for tack with the cornerbacks when he's dealing with them. But besides that, there's things I'm very impressed with, and I know he can in improve them even more with the Atlanta Falcons organization. So it's not that too concerning. Like everybody else in the NFL, they have their positives and they have their negatives. As long as you acknowledge the negatives and you can build on those negatives, he will be all right. So on that note, if you like this type of content, let me know by hitting that like button, share this video with your friends and foe, and if you guys agree with me or disagree with me on this video, hit that comment section below and we could definitely talk about it. So thank you guys so much for watching these type of videos. I really enjoy making these videos and I, hopefully I can continue with the process for, for many years as possible. And if you would be so kind and generous, would you hit that subscribe button? It helps out this Falcon Empire so massively. You guys will understand it. I am so grateful for even you guys watching this video. So thank you from the bottom of my Falcon heart. I really do appreciate it. So on that note, there's going to be, a, the next episode is going to be for you guys. I'm going to put up a poll and whatever is the most popular one, that's, that's who the video is going to be. So it's up to you guys, the audience, to decide what's going to be the next episode. So on that note, what do Falcons do? Rise up. Until the next episode, show love and peace to the world and peace.